there was that uh, recommendation that I forget who made it, uh, but that um, part of members of the the board of the Reserve Bank that they that their deliberations or their decisions are are published, or if someone's got a dissenting opinion, that's published. So we get more com we get more communication from the board members, and so we understand that there where there is a difference of of views, and that could help the public understand the deliberations and realize that the the Reserve Bank isn't this all seeing, all knowing entity that uh, that that uh, that that's fully in command, or maybe that's the wrong way of putting it. But maybe that would make people realize that they're that they're human and mistakes can be made. And so when we have a governor who says, "Oh, interest rates will remain this at this level until 2024," we should realize, well, he's talking about on based on these assumptions. I mean, you can never guarantee anything. But what do you think about that idea of having more information about what different board members are thinking? Oh, I, I think that's a great idea. Um, that partly because um, well, partly to improve the incentives of individual board members, that individual board members should be accountable for their decisions. And at the moment, there's, there isn't any individual accountability. These decisions are presented as decisions of the board. And so I think there's no incentive for a board member to say, I think this decision is wrong. Um, the research says opposite. We need to pursue an alternative course, course of action. Um, so partly there's inadequate challenge within the board process. Um, and, and, and as a result, less need for the bank to defend itself. Um, but also it means that the public <coughs> is not brought into these highly consequential debates and decisions. And that would improve things. And where a board is divided on a particular course of action or a particular piece of analysis is where external research and external opinions are most valuable. Um, but no one knows that. So people talk about monetary policy including you and me, but we've got no idea whether we're talking about something that the board regards as completely settled or as a 50-50 decision. And so a lot of what we say is not relevant and there are big questions on which further evidence would be useful that we don't know about. Right. On the board, on the members of the board, You've uh, been quite prominent in in the media recently and in the commentary on this uh, RBA review. You've made the point that uh, the level of expertise of board members is not is not really where it should be. I mean, obviously there are some that are have the expertise, but um, are you arguing for more economists on the board rather than business people? Is that correct? Yes, and, right. and to be precise, more monetary policy experts. The, um, and this would be my number one recommendation for reform of the RBA. The, we talked earlier about the bank making mistakes. The first place that they should be caught um, and challenged is at the board level. Mm. Um, and, but at the moment, the board seems to be operating as a rubber stamp for the governor. And that's not good. I mean, so Phil Lowe is a very talented economist um, who gets lots of things right, but he's human and he's just one person and he, and he makes mistakes. And you'll have, you would have fewer mistakes if the decisions were instead made by a committee of experts. And is and, that what they've got in the States or in England or in, or yeah, in uh, yeah. the UK? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that, it, that's in, um, an, an interesting comparison. So that when in 1959, when the RPA board was being set up, 
it was actually common for her to have um, non-economists making monetary policy decisions. But since then, other central banks have decided these are technical questions on which research is relevant and needs to be applied. And so they've moved to monetary policy committees overwhelmingly comprised with monetary policy experts. I mean, actually, it's not just experts, but they have some of the leading economists in the world on monetary policy sitting on their monetary policy committees. The people that wrote the textbooks I, I learned my monetary policy from are often on the FOMC or the Monetary Policy Committee of the Bank of England. Um, that, you know, so whereas other countries have stars making their monetary policy decision, we have part-time amateurs. Yeah. Well, look at who's been the Federal Reserve Bank governor in the US. You've had Ben Bernanke. Yeah. You've had, uh, I mean, who's Janet, made Janet, you know, yep. huge contributions to macroeconomics. Janet Yellen. Yeah, Absolutely. And with the deputy of Stanley Fisher. And, um, right. And he's the person who wrote the textbook. The, well, uh, and, and Bernanke and, um, yeah. and Frederick Mishkin. Um, yeah, they, yeah, they've written textbooks on how to do monetary policy. Okay. Yeah, good point. Uh, that, that's a very good point. 